Hello everybody. Uh, I wanted to um, basically show you how to make some spore swabs. I know there's a lot of videos about this uh, out there already and uh, yeah, you ignore my kind of fat belly. Um, but I can't be bothered to put on a shirt. <laughs> so, uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a five pack. I've got ten packs. I've got one pack. So I've got five packs. Um, I'm going to give my hand a little bit of spray alcohol. Uh, I generally don't use gloves when I'm doing this, just simply because I, I normally don't talk either. Um, but uh, I've actually swabbed this this uh, cross here, this this cultigen of fruit, uh, several times already. So I'm not too bothered about these swabs being super, super duper sterile. Uh, I haven't really found a big problem at all with contamination. Uh, as long as you don't touch anything too much, um, a lot of contamination comes from contact. So notice how I'm kind of positioning this mushroom, which I just got out of my fruiting tent. Uh, I'm kind of, I don't want to really touch the gills with anything but the swab. Um, so that being said, again, you normally wouldn't want to be talking and probably want to do this as quickly as possible. So I am just going to, I actually, I, I kind of sprayed this little packet with, uh, with alcohol earlier. And uh, again, since I'm doing this for my own personal use, you know, I, I'm not really super duper bothered about them being absolutely sterile. Again, I have had not, I have not had any trouble um, with, with swabs being contaminated. I think again, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people maybe do things like they'll set down swabs where they touch things. So, so watch, I'm never ever going to touch. The only thing that end of that swab should ever touch is the gill tissue. Uh, the, the gill edge or the face or whatever, um, and an outer plate. So I'm going to do my best. So I'm going to pull these out one by one. And uh, and this sort of technique, again, try not to touch the, the edges of the package or anything. Uh, and again, I'm getting really sort of nervous even just talking while I'm doing this. So I'm going to set my scissors there. And what I'm going to do is, again, try to swab and get them right there so that I can, I, I can dry them. Uh, dry them for about maybe five minutes and then I'll stick them back either in the original package or the, uh, a new package. Um, so again, here's the, here's the technique. I, what I like to do is just go straight in. I, I saw some people like to chop off the, the stipes, the stems, and then, and then swab, but I just kind of go in and um, I'm good on there because I get all shaky. And then just kind of rotate it. And then maybe come back and maybe... So you can see there, just from one pass, that is literally probably 10,000 spores at least. So I'm happy with that because I have five swabs and this cap is, um, I don't know, not super big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy with that. So a lot of people will talk about gill tissue. Um, when you get too much gill tissue, there's a possibility you might simply be getting a clone of this fruit. I'm going to use this. This is an F1 um, fruit. So these spores will be used to make the next generation. So I want to try to make sure I'm getting spores and not uh, tissue because I don't want to clone this thing. I already have a culture of this. I, I don't need another culture of this particular cross. What I want to do is get these F1 spores. And so again, kind of a light touch. Uh, someone mentioned that if you get some gill tissue, maybe you can just sort of like wipe it off. Uh, again, that's that's not like a super duper dark spore, but that is way, way, way more than enough. Uh, in fact, I would rather have fewer spores uh, that are cleaner and that don't have gill tissue instead of, you know, somebody, I, I've seen a lot of people get in there and they really like super duper, like smash the heck out of the gills. Um, that's not what I'm after. I'm after mature spores that are on the gill that are readily you know attached to that swab now if you go in there and you just smash the heck out of the gills to i don't know get a blue color or whatever on your swabs that, that's not really what we're after. we're after see that dust on there that's what i want I, I don't want chunks of tissue i don't want to see blue i don't really care what color uh you know the swab ends up being how dark it is or whatever i've heard people complain about oh i got this this swab from a vendor and it wasn't very dark and like literally that, you see that? I just did that one, that was what, like one second? In, out, that's all. That's thousands of spores. Oop, I'm about to drop this. So again, you know, you wanna, uh, I wanna get all like, on my soapbox here, or whatever, but a lot of people like darker spores. Uh, again, that's that's usually, uh, I hate to say, somebody who's maybe not um, 
not really dealt with spores uh -uh, very often. And they want to see like, oh, you know, you think I paid 20 bucks for this swab and I only got this little bit of spores. Um, after a while, you'll start to realize that fewer spores like that means that the swab person probably knew what they were doing. See, so the other thing I try to do, so that, that's five right there. That's all I'm going to do from this fruit. Like I said, I've swabbed this before. Um, this is nice, uh, nice, pretty phenotype. I got a nice, uh, I don't know, little, little nipple there on the top. And I got a wavy cap here. I don't know. It's looking okay. That's just an F1. As, uh, as we discussed the other day on, on, on Michael Gigi's podcast, the, uh, and, and a lot of people have discussed this, uh, the, the, these, this is where the gold is right here. Those spores on there indicate, well, that they're from uh, a recombination and a meiotic event, a my meiosis. So we've produced literally on that spore, there could be another thousand phenotypes just waiting to be discovered. You know, my F1 here looks okay already. He's kind of cute. I don't know. This is a normal, normal, you know, normal guy. Um, there is some potential here, though, you know. I got this nice little umbo here, and I got some funny-looking gills. And I can see there, I just noticed that. See on the stipe there? See that little black part on the stipe? That means that the spores are dropping. So this one probably would give me a spore print. Since I've swabbed it so much, and to be honest, I'm kind of... I've got a lot of stuff laying around. I'm, I might just stick with the swabs for this guy because I'm going to immediately take these spores, probably one of these swabs uh, in particular, and just put it directly to, to agar. agar. And uh, yeah, so like I said, you can just chop this off. Uh, let me show you real quick. Um, blah, 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 I'm at it here. Got a scissors here, another scissors. If you want to make a spore print, this is straightforward too. Again, I I'm, I'm, wouldn't normally be this kind of messy. Uh, here's all you do to make spore print. Uh, this is a piece of aluminum foil that I have flame sterilized later. Um, this is a Tupperware container. Okay, so nice and shiny, shiny side up. So what I'm going to do here is this is really, really straightforward. You just chop this off. I would spray this with alcohol too, but since I'm in a bit of a hurry, I'll just chop this off. Um, so what I've done, this is a perfect candidate for cloning. <clears throat> if you want to clone this, <clears throat> rip it down the middle, get some of that tissue right there, that inside tissue, rip that out, put it on an auger plate, I use tweezers, perfect clone. All that business about top, bottom, etc, etc, the best place to get a clone, right there. Soft tissue, fresh tissue, uncontaminated, hasn't been exposed to the air. That's where you want to get a clone, just get yourself little tweezers and just rip it out. <clears throat> Put that on an auger plate, bam, you got a clone. Simple as that. So I'm gonna probably donate that to the garbage bin. So here's a spore print. Take this literally, without talking probably. Put it right there, cover it back up. Leave it for three or four hours, maybe take a little flashlight. Mm, kind of look under the edge, see if you got a dark uh, deposit there. Important thing you guys label 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 Especially because this is one of my crosses man. I do not want to forget what these spores are like when you transfer auger plates Chunks of agar start to look very similar once you've transferred on, <laughs> onto an unlabeled plate um, The same thing with spore prints. I've got geez. I got a lot of stuff going on now So I'm gonna label this. I'm gonna literally leave that marker right there So I don't forget to label this uh, I'm going to let my spores dry a little bit. Um, I'm not going to bother cloning that again, but look at that. That's nice. Some nice color there. See that? What that say? For all you people that like that, what did, what did Michael say? Yeah, break on blue or whatever. You guys get working on those oyster mushrooms. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's about it, you guys. I'm going to let those swabs dry for about five minutes, and then I'm just going to stick them back in the, in the original container probably use one and, and do you can you can also just simply just streak them but I'm gonna make another video I, I have a slightly different technique I don't, I don't want to get into that right now I'm gonna make another video where I, I don't just simply do this streak I kind of rip the heck out of this thing I've seen other people do it but I, I've got a slightly more brutal um, <laughs> death metal influence version of how I do <laughs> swaps <laughs> or how, how I get them on the on the agar 
for the the next generation. Um, anywho, uh, thank you guys for listening, man. Love love all the comments, you guys. I, I just I do this for fun, you know. Sorry, I'm not really big into editing, and I, I can't be bothered, man. I got I got enough other computer crap I got to do. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed that. I will uh, see you later. Bye bye.